this vlog is powered by Y Food. Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm launching a brand new series here on my YouTube, The Road to Van Life. This series will be your go-to for everything you need to know about starting your van life journey. I'm really excited about launching this series as I love sharing van life tips with you all and helping you achieve your dream life too. Each episode, we will be diving deep into one topic at a time, where we will chat about topics like setting yourself up as a digital nomad, finding a place to park up, designing your dream layout and the horrid parts of van life too, like choosing a toilet suitable for you and where to put your waist. We will also get to meet so many cool van lifers along the way and I can't wait. And in today's episode, we will be talking about how you find yourself an off-grid park-up. I thought I'd share a few of my top tips when it comes to finding an off-grid park-up. Where will you sleep was the biggest question asked by my family and friends when I first announced I wanted to roam the world in a van. How to find a park up is also the biggest question asked by those looking to start van life or looking to start off grid camping. So what I'm going to do is break it all down and go over what tools I use to find park ups. We will hunt down our very own park ups together and I'll also give you some tips and general rules of thumb when it comes to parking up for the day or night. And finally, I asked you guys on here and over on Instagram at Nick Rooms, go give me a follow, whether you had any questions about park up so what I've done is a little Q&A at the end to answer all of your questions and before we kick off this vlog I wanted to let you know that over on my patreon I have added a brand new benefit well, you will get access to all of my park ups via Google Maps. Each park up will have a mini description, full review including signal, barriers, ground type, facilities, etc. and pictures so you can see it before you go there. As I continue my travels, this map will be updated to include all of the park ups I stay at or have come across whilst on the road. If you'd like access to these, head on over to my Patreon to find out more details and the link is in my description below. So let's start with the apps I use. There may be more available, but I'm gonna tell you about the four that I have experience with. So what I'm gonna do is tell you about each one and why I find them beneficial and I'm confident they will come in handy for you too. Number one, Park for Night. This is my go-to app for finding off-grid park ups around the world and it's the one I recommend to all. It is a database of park ups presented on a map similarly to Google Maps. This app allows the community to add in park ups they have found, including pictures, and for the park ups to be reviewed by others by rating it out of five, leaving a comment, and even adding more pictures. Of course, with any app that relies on the community, it's only as good as people make it. Therefore, there are a few downsides. For example, some listens aren't complete, they're missing pictures, and it's always good to see what a park up looks like before you get there. And then also people's reviews are personal to their lifestyle, so they might not note whether there's signal there or whether there's barriers in place. So you don't find these things out until you get there, which can be a little bit of a pain. Another major problem with these types of apps is when you do add your park ups on there, it can cause an influx of tourism. So you do need to be mindful of what you do and don't share on there. Anyway, the way I use this app is pretty simple. When I know where I'm going, I head into this app and check the area and have a rummage around the listings to see if any of the spots tickle my fancy. If there are, I favourite them so I can find them quicker later. This app has various other features where you can search around me, around a place, you can browse via map or list view, filter by types of place and other options and if you go premium you can even pop your trip in and it will pull up park ups en route. Pretty nifty. Next up, number two, iOverlander. This app is very similar to Park for Night, a database full of park ups across the world and features include being able to filter if you're looking for something more specific. I personally use this one more for backup as I find that Park for Night has more options here in the UK but I thought I'd share it with you in case it comes in handy and it might be better for you depending on your location. So I'm just going to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, Y Food, for powering today's vlog. Y Food is a complete balanced drinking meal. Their range of drinks come in lots of delicious flavours and are lactose and gluten free. This bottle contains 26 vitamins and minerals, all the essential nutrients our body needs, and it keeps you full for up to five hours. This drink really works for my busy on the go lifestyle as when I don't have time to cook, I have a balanced meal ready to go. It's perfect for when I'm on a day out adventure or have a non-stop day out on the build. I'm currently stocked up on the vanilla and chocolate flavor, both delicious and both vegan. For 10% off, head to the link in my description below and use my discount code NickRomes10. Enjoy. So what if these apps don't have a suitable park up for you? Or maybe you just want to try your hand at finding your very own. That's where the next two apps come in handy. 
So number three, Google Maps. I use this app in various different ways. So I'm gonna run through all the different methods with you now. The first way, I simply search keywords like car park, reservoir, nature reserve, and similar words like that. This then pulls up pinpoints for locations that fall under those search terms. As Google Maps shows you which areas of the world are more green, I tend to focus on the pinpoints with greenery around them or that look more out of the way. So let's put this to the test and find our very own park-ups that are not on these apps. I'm not too far from the Recon, so let's check out that area. What I'm going to do is search car park. As you can see, it's brought up lots of pinpoints. Some will be to Tesco and town car parks, but this area here of greenery is the Recon, so let's zoom in. As you can see, more pinpoints appear as you zoom in, so let's click into this one. I'm now going to satellite view the place. I find it easier to rummage around on Google Maps on default view, but when it comes to seeing the spot, you want visuals, so then satellite view is my preferred. We can see there are quite a few cars tucked away in the trees, so it seems like quite a cool spot. P.S. This method doesn't always work, as there may be barriers, the ground might be sloped, or there may be no signal, but it's always fun finding your own park-ups to stay. Anyway, let's street view it and see if we can spot any of these things prior to driving there. So there's clearly a barrier and it looks slanted to me. I feel like a right detective. Regardless, before I go, I'm going to take a little stroll down the road to see if there's anywhere else to pull up for the night, just in case. And to me, it looks like there are a few little areas on the side of the road I can pull in. Obviously, I'm in a camper, so my van is tiny and fits under barriers, but I don't have chocks for leveling, so slopey ground is a no-go for me. Anyway, let's hit the road and check this place out. So this is probably the tightest barrier I've ever seen, so I'm not actually going to risk it myself. Look at that. It's... It would just be touching and if there's any lumps or bumps in this little passageway I'm definitely going to hit my solar onto the bar up here. So unfortunately this car park isn't worth parking at but here it is, it's very beautiful. So it's covered in woodland and it's a really nice little thicket but it is very sloped anyway so I'm not going to risk it but as we saw whilst we were driving down here there's loads of laybys that I could pull into anyway so it's not too much of a problem. So the second way I use this app is when none of my search terms work. So what I do then is I pick an area, set maps to satellite view and I scan around. So as I'm already at the Recon let's scan the roads around the base. I've never been to this end of the Recon so let's head that way. P.S. You save so much money on petrol doing this rather than driving around aimlessly. Right, here is a road at the base. Is that a camper I can see? Let's go into street view. Brill. Looks like there are tracks on the side of this stretch of road, so seems like people park here. And with the van or camper parked up, I have high hopes for this place. It's only a few minutes down the road, so I think we should go check it out. I've just pulled into the park that we found on Google Maps and it is looking bliss. It is much quieter here compared to the other side of the Recon, which is more of a tourist hotspot. So yeah, this is where I've parked up. You can see that I've just slotted in nicely onto the track there, which does look like it probably gets muddy in the winter, so more of a spring summer spot. And also I checked my phone and I've got signal here. So that's a bonus because again, I don't really get that on the other side of the Recon. So I think I found myself a nice new park up. Onyx, do you want to go on a walk? Check out the area? So the final way I use Google Maps, yes, this app is extremely handy, is by saving all of my found park-ups on there. Although Google Maps doesn't have a database of park-ups, I find it the best app to use when creating your own personalised map. Separating out the spots you love from the mass amount of listings over on Park for Night and similar apps comes in handy, especially when you want to return to the area or if you want to share it with family and friends. I personally use this app because the features on Google Maps are awesome, of course. You can create your own map with layers, for example, a map of England with counties as different layers. You can colour code and set a specific icon for each place, add notes and images to save locations too. Number four, what three words? This app is growing in popularity and I've mentioned it before in regards to its safety functionalities in my 12 essential security tips for van lifers vlog. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out in the card above. However, it also doubles up as an awesome app to save park ups whilst on the move. Again, this app comes in a map view, but the reason why I use this app as well 
is because it gives every one square meter a unique name in the form of three words, which makes it a much more accurate mapping tool compared to Google Maps. The downside of this app is it isn't as sophisticated as Google Maps when it comes to adding commentary, icons or images to locations you have saved. If they were to include these features, it would definitely give Google Maps a run for their money. So the way I use this app is to simply save locations whilst I'm on the move. It's kind of like a notebook to my Google Maps. For example, when I'm driving past a potential park up, but I don't have time to fully check it out, I can head into my What Three Words app and add the spot I'm in. Yes, you can add spots to your Google Maps too, but not to a personalized map map you have created via your phone, just to your overall account. And as I use what three words to save foraging spots and cool places I found whilst out adventuring, I just like to keep my notes in one place and then once I've checked it out and I'm happy, I then put it onto my Google Maps. So that is how I use those four apps. And then another really quick and simple way with no app or anything is literally just keep your eyes peeled as you drive around because you never know what you might come across. I know this might seem like a lot to take in, but it's rare that I have to go through all four methods just to find a park up. More often than not, park for night already has one on there that you can use. And also you just come across so many as you're driving around. So you're really not gonna be short for park ups. And also to know it is rare, but it can happen that you end up driving around for ages to find a park up. This usually happens when you've got no signal. So now let's move on to some tips when it comes to parking up and some general rules of thumb when it comes to off-grid camping. So tips first, and I know some of them will cross over with tips I've given to you before, but let's get cracking. Number one, if solo, try to make sure you have signal when parking up for the night. Number two, park on flat ground unless you have chocks. It's not fun cooking in the van on a slant. Number three, if it's windy, make sure you face head on to the wind. Thank me later. Number four, if you have solar, make sure you park in a sunny spot to utilize those rays. Number five, head to your park up before sunset. There is nothing worse than trying to find a park up in the dark. And now moving on to some general rules of thumb that I think are really important for van lifers or people looking to off-grid camp to know. No matter what, leave no trace or leave the place better. If there are already a few campers in a spot, keep on going. It's important to save some space for the locals and for other people to use the car park too. Plus, we don't want any no overnight camping signs or barriers put in place. Generally, two nights is the maximum to stay in one spot. Geotagging. It's lovely to share your park ups with everyone, but just be mindful as to whether the place can handle an influx of tourism, as mentioned before. And finally, leave some space between your vehicles where possible. I know some car parks have designated motorhome bays or the car park's really small, or there's a small area of flat ground, so it's unavoidable. But where you can avoid it, just give each other a little bit of privacy. Finally, I asked you guys on here and over on Instagram if you had any park up specific questions. So I thought I'd do a little Q&A to answer all the random topics and scenarios that may pop up as you're off grid camping. Now let's dive right on in. How would you approach parking in a more crowded slash residential area? So I'm going to split that up and class crowded as city and residential as a like an estate. So in terms of city, I have camped out in London for three months when I was working there and I had no issues. Obviously, it's very busy. They're very used to lots of people and lots of vehicles. So to be honest, I feel like you kind of go unnoticed. But when it comes to residential parking, which again, I experienced in London as not all of it is city, uh, you do have to be a little bit more mindful. So there were times I found myself parking on streets, but what I aim to do is have my van next to like someone's garden wall or opposite some greenery, or I'd look for locations that were as rural as you can get in London. There are actually quite a lot of green spaces that you can go to. And I actually have a blog post on park ups in London I never talk about blog posts because I haven't written one in probably like two years. But if you wanted to check that out, you can find that in the description below. Have you found it harder since COVID and van life kicking off? COVID? No. To be honest, I felt like the only one on the road. So I had no issues with that. In terms of van life taking off, yes, I have seen quite a few more vans on the road since 2018, um, but I'm yet to be at a park up where it's absolutely crowded of van lifers, motorhomers, campers, etc. How much planning ahead do you do? To be honest, I don't plan that far ahead, but when I know I'm going to a certain area, for example, I recently went to North Wales, I will go on to park for night and check out the area and favor any spots that I think are worth checking out as a destination to. Otherwise, I tend to look on the day, so I don't really spend that much time um, planning my park ups. <laughs> do you bother finding flat ground or do you park anywhere? 
yes, 99% of the time I look for flat ground and 99% of the time I come across flat ground. So I've been very lucky in that respect. But there are times that I would sacrifice not having flat ground is when you find just the most beautiful location. Um, and to be honest, I try to then have my van slanting like this. So that would be my head and that would be my legs. So then that way I'm not like rolling to one side when going to bed. Is being near or off a main road something you want or want to avoid? I think this really depends on what you want out of a park up. If you're looking for convenience because you want to go into a town or a city the next day or it's en route, then I don't mind being on a lay-by or just off a main road. It doesn't bother me. Obviously, you just have to bear in mind that from usually 6am, people start their commute. So it's just really up to you. I guess you're in a van, so you can choose where the hell you want to park up. Have you had any issues with locals or police? I am proud to say that I have zero major issues with locals or police. Um, locals, only the other day I bumped into one in Shrewsbury and she was really happy for me to be in my van and she was excited for all my travels and things like that. So that was really nice because I feel like I built up a bit of a persona that all locals were going to be rude to me if they came across me sleeping near their house um, so yeah that was nice and in terms of police um, I've had two instances where police have knocked on my van but both ended up um, with them just wishing me a good night so yeah I haven't really had any bad problems with police or locals how do you decide if a park up is safe if you don't know the area so that is where park for night comes in handy as you can leave reviews on the park up so you can see what other people think of the place before you go. Just remember to take everyone's reviews with a pinch of salt as they're all based on their own wants and needs. Um, and then obviously if I found the park up by myself then I have no idea but I just kind of rely on gut feeling. So I started van life in 2018 and I've been on the road for two years because I had a break in between um, and so far trusting in my gut feeling in unknown locations has worked out so yeah that's what I do. Do you feel safer alone or with other vans? I guess Overall, I always feel safe because I would never park up anywhere that I didn't. I would always be prepared to leave if I was worried about a park up. But yes, I do feel much safer when there are other vans around because if something was to happen, I feel like you've got backup. Are the good park for night spots often busy? To be honest, I'm not too sure because I avoid peak destinations during peak periods. And last summer it was COVID, so there was hardly anyone on the road. But from Instagram and seeing other people's stories, it does look like there are some hot spots that have been heaving. Whether they're park for night spots or not, I don't know. But that's why we should be mindful when it comes to geotagging our park ups. Anyway, guys, I'm going to call that a wrap on today's vlog. I hope this has been super helpful for you. And make sure to keep tuned for more episodes in this brand new series, The Road to Van Life, which will be your go to for learning everything you need to know when it comes to starting your van life journey and as always if you've enjoyed the vlog please give me a thumbs up subscribe and turn on those notifications ciao